Hi, what's it like down here? Man, it's a bummer. <laughs> yeah, it was. And if Mondays weren't already a bummer enough, it seems like our false spring is over. Inches of snow made for a very messy drive to work this morning. And bitter cold temperatures could make for a slick commute home as well. We have full team coverage tonight from roads to the Arctic air mass now above the city. We've got you covered. Plus how the city is preparing to keep some of the most vulnerable in our city safe in these bitter cold temperatures. Good evening everyone. Thank you for joining us for Crime 2 News at 5. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Low visibility, slick roads and other stuck drivers have been causing a mess since this morning. And I knew it was going to get cold and I knew it was going to snow, but not this bad. On those Spokane Hills we all love and know, know and love rather, Spokane mm -hmm. was only expected to get about an inch of snow or less perhaps, but some areas, especially the South Hill, got about four times that amount. And that early morning snow led to several drivers sliding off the roads during their morning commute. And even though the sun did find its way out of the clouds eventually, the bitter, bitter cold temperatures could certainly affect your drive home tonight. Creme News Janelle Finch is joining us now as we kick off our team coverage as we share the city's response to road maintenance today. Janelle? Hi guys, at 4 a.m. plows were out clearing off snow covered streets. Additional crews joined those crews earlier or later in the day, but winter weather plus freezing temperatures means cautionary driving for the next few days. Waking up this morning, Spokane residents all had the same thoughts about today's weather. It's cold. It's really cold. The snow came as a surprise for some people. Friends and I were joking about it being like a fake spring yesterday, you know, like just like nature's sleight of hand, you know, like surprise, never mind, you know. Despite the holiday, plow crews were out laying down sand and de-icer on primary and secondary city roads. But that didn't stop some drivers from getting a gentle reminder to drive with caution. For main city streets, by the afternoon there wasn't enough snow for plowing crews. Plows need two inches of snow to do their jobs. As the day went on, the city began relying on snow melting materials to help clear roads. Now looking toward the evening road conditions, the city communications manager is warning drivers to be careful on secondary roads. Uh, it's going to help a little bit because it's going to warm up a little bit today. So we're already seeing that those primary routes are pretty clear uh, and those secondaries and hills are uh, will start to freeze up again. But uh, we use all the materials we can. We sand. We continually go back to those problem spots when necessary. Drivers on Southern County roads saw extreme winds and snow covered streets with whiteout conditions. Palouse Highway headed toward Valley Ford was mainly clear, but secondary roads off the highway were covered with a thick snow. We were unable to reach the county public works manager for comment on when those county streets should be cleared off. But regardless, over the next few days, it's important to make sure you drive slow and maintain a safe distance between you and other vehicles. In Spokane, Janelle Finch, Creme 2 News. Janelle, thank you very much. And it was a good thing it's a holiday today because that meant no school for Spokane and Coeur d'Alene kids. Yeah, that meant that they didn't have to worry about getting to school right. safely. It meant that they just got to enjoy all the snow. So take a look at some of these pictures that we have been getting throughout the day. And regardless, Regardless if it's your kids or maybe the pets or just showing off how pretty our city is covered in the snow, we want to see the pictures of where you are. You can text your pictures or your videos to that number right there on your screen, 509-448-2000. You can also use the Near Me section of the Creme 2 mobile app. And if you are out enjoying the snow, make sure you're bundling up. Overnight lows are expected to be super cold. Very cold. We want to send things straight to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry, who again is tracking an Arctic air mass. And when you hear Arctic, you know that we're not messing around. Around, right, Tom? We are not messing around. <laughs> Here we are in the third week of February and it's getting serious again. We're talking about that Arctic air mass and dangerously cold temperatures this week with bitter cold wind chills. We have a wind chill advisory, as you can see, all across areas of eastern Washington, north Idaho, and into western Montana. That advisory in effect through early Wednesday morning, or I should say in the mid morning hours on Wednesday. Wind gusts between 30 to 40 miles per hour at times. These are some of the wind chill temperatures that we're seeing outside. Seven degrees in Spokane, five in Coeur d'Alene. Again, with the winds over 20 miles an hour, this is where we're seeing some of the coldest wind chills right in the Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, Deer Park, and Sandpoint area. Right now, the air temperature is at 20 degrees. Wind is out of the east northeast at 22 miles per hour. As you take a look at uh, Silver Mountain, new snow falling up in the mountains, folks. And there is snow down to the south of us. So watch out if you're going to be uh, traveling along I-84 uh, and uh, into 
areas of southeastern and south central Washington and north central Oregon. They're seeing snow falling still at this time. We're now going to start talking about bitter cold weather in the sense of an overnight low of 8 degrees. Should be sunny tomorrow again, but only 22 will be the daytime high. We start to moderate our temperatures by Sunday. We may get back up into the low 40s. All right, we're going to go over to meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the studio right now. He's going to explain what is so dangerous about these wind gusts and that wind chill. Yeah, that's right, Tom. And really, it's the wind that's uh, being the most dangerous and having the biggest impact with this weather system. In fact, the wind physically blew the snow into our outdoor camera, so that's why you find me inside for tonight. Well, that's inconvenient for us. It's the wind chills that are the most dangerous part. You may have actually seen this uh, grid that you see behind me. That's how we calculate these wind chills. It's a factor between the temperature and how strong the winds are, and we're kind of in this area that you see here with a wind of about maybe 15, 20, 25 miles per hour puts our wind chills at around minus 7 to minus 17, but if it gets a little colder or a little windier, we get well, that wind chill gets a little bit colder and that affects the frostbite time. So if you have exposed skin, your fingers or your nose or your toes, if you're outside for an hour with the wind chill at minus five, you can start to develop frostbite. But when the wind chills get to minus 20, then it's only 30 minutes. And obviously the colder those wind chills get, the faster the onset for any frostbite becomes. So let's look at our wind chills and the frostbite time for tonight. Again, below zero, but should take about an again, if you're exposed skin for an hour that would develop frostbite maybe down to about 30 minutes near the Kellogg and Wallace area. But we are just under a windshield advisory. Should we have been under a warning, then we would see those frostbite times and onset times go down because our windshields would be that much colder. Thomas, good information there. Thank you very much. And with these bitter cold temperatures, people have asked what the city of Spokane is doing to keep people experiencing homelessness safe. Our own Ian Smay spoke with the city about its plans. He's joining us now live with more. Ian. I am here near Camp Hope just off of 2nd Avenue in East Central Spokane. Let me tell you guys, it is still bitter cold, especially with that wind blowing. And in response to all this, city spokesperson Brian Coddington told me the city has been working to expand available shelter capacity. And part of those efforts include the city providing up to 40 hotel rooms for people to stay in. The Guardians Foundation told us earlier today that leading up to today, some of those hotel rooms were available at the Armada Inn on 3rd Avenue. But Coddington said that the city wasn't publicly naming where these additional additional hotel rooms are located. That was done in an effort to free up bed space at the Cannon Street shelter. I was at the shelter at about three o'clock this afternoon and while there, a sign outside of the shelter said that they were at capacity and full, but a lot of people were boarding a bus. He also said the city doesn't have a set plan for another emergency warming center just yet, but Connington didn't rule out that possibility. It will not in that format. So we're looking at utilizing the existing spaces. We're looking at being able to maximize existing resources. We're also looking at extension of contracts um, and we are looking at um, different ways to house people outside of the cold. Coddington also said Union Gospel Mission is providing 14 more beds for women. He said the Way Out Shelter is also helping capacity by providing 41 additional beds for those that would normally take up space in the nightly shelters. Coddington said police and fire crews are as normal for any more frequent welfare checks with this bitter cold. And he said that's not only to make sure people are staying safe, but also to make sure that they are aware of the resources available to them to get out of the cold. Reporting in East Central Spokane, Ian Smay. Creme 2 News. All right, Ian, thank you very much. And stay on top of this extreme weather with our Creme 2 app. You can sign up to get severe weather alerts or just check the forecast in your neighborhood. You can download that Creme 2 app in your phone's app store. All right, still ahead tonight. Today, Spokane County Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich held a press conference to explain why he chose to fire one of his deputies. We heard from both men today about the controversial allegations. More after the break.